I speak a language, uh, the old language, uh, which is very undistorted. It's it's totally intact, and uh, not many people speak the old language anymore. Where um, uh, the language is alive and strong, and it is always active, uh, which means any new things or events or situations or circumstances come up where the language was not uh, used before, uh, let's say like new technology and um, a global community of uh, the animal world or events and activities that go on. A lot of people that are not really fluent in the language will tend to not know how to say those things or say we never had that so we don't have a word or language for that so because of that the language kind of stopped dead in its tracks from evolving Mm -hmm. with time and the uh, changing world the language that was spoken uh, 30, 40, 50 years ago is very different from Uh, how the language is spoken now. I'm not saying they are different in a way that one is better than the other or more than the other. All I'm saying is the language that was around 50 years ago and before that and the way the language works now is an expansion, development and growth of the language to accommodate for the changes uh, with time. It's like evolving. Totally. Yeah, it it yeah. continues to evolve. Yeah. Just like any other language. Yeah. That's important to uh, keep that in mind uh, when working with uh, elders and strong speakers of the language uh, to have strong academic education as well. Because the two things that re- work really well is that uh, strong uh, language fluency, the mm-hmm. ability to speak language, and the ability to have a strong academic background and put the two together. And when that happens, you have people or educators that are effective and uh, working with the languages to uh, pass it on and teach uh, language learners how to speak uh, fluently yeah. uh, in the language. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the uh, ministry curriculum, native language programs, and the uh, language programs we have at the university. All of those have to be in sync. How I teach language in primary, junior, intermediate, secondary school, post-secondary education, I do the same way of teaching in every level. There's no difference in there. Yeah. It's your strategies, your methods, and, and the effective and best practices, yeah. and things that work. Yeah. And how, I, how do I know that they work? It's because the students are enthusiastic, motivated, inspired, and they want to continue learning. And as a teacher, there's nothing more rewarding than having my former students in grade four come to me as an adult and say, remember me, and I'm like, yeah, but of course I don't remember because I've had so many students and they change from kids to adults. Anyway, yep. so, and I'm like, oh, so what are you doing now? Well, I'm a teacher. Because when you were my teacher, I wanted to be like you. And I had another uh, student in grade one who stopped me at the door when they were leaving my native language class. He looked up at me and said... Mr. Beardy, and I said, what? <laughs> it's racist time. <laughs> he says, I want to be like you when I grow up. And I looked down at him, he's a little guy. He said, why would you want to be like me? <laughs> I don't want to be like me. <laughs> and he looked up, he's serious, and he said, I want to, I want to learn our language, and I want to teach it. And I was taken aback by that. Mm -hmm. I looked at him and I thought, well, how do I answer that? Well, I could answer it in two different ways. 
one, I could just say, well, great, you know, I'm sure you will. But then I thought, is that the truth or not? So I went with option B, the, the other answer I, I told him was, well, let's work on that and make sure it does happen. From that day on, that was quite a few years back, I changed how I looked at the way the language programs and language teaching was done, and it was pretty bad, in a bad state. I've been to thousands of conferences in 30 years, language conferences, and I keep hearing the same regurgitation of what has been done and what new generations of people, they uh, speak at the conferences and say all the pretty things they're doing and stuff. But when you go to their home base, it's half truth. I mean, you can sort of see what they were talking about. But it does not apply to all other communities and uh, uh, environments. Yeah. Um, so one thing is, where you teach and what you teach, it, it has to be local. Mm-hmm. It has to be functional. That's the word I use Function. when teaching language. You have to teach functional language. Functional language means language that is used every day uh, in, in a natural mm-hmm. uh, speech, yeah. communication thing. And how do you get that? Well, I'm working on a curriculum. I've been working on this curriculum for many years. Uh, it's, it's, it's based on that comment by that little grade one student and how I have to change um, how I teach because there was something missing. Uh, the way the things uh, language was being taught has been taught for many, many, many years and it's a wave crash and burn, I call it, okay. uh, where students learn the language during the course of the year to some extent. So they're riding the wave. They're going up. They're learning some. Mm-hmm. They're you know, teaching units and themes and stuff. And they crash. Mm-hmm. They go down at the end of the year mm-hmm. or at the end of the month when that unit is done. So they pick up like a wave and then that goes down to flat and then they start again. And so that's how When you look at students in school, elementary, high school, or even uh, the uh, instructors program, you will see that happening. When they are in the program, they're being uh, exposed to the language. Yes, there's there's learning happening. But once it stops, stops. they lose it. If you don't use something, you you start to lose it. And I thought, how do you, like, how do you change that? Yeah. That seems to be like a major problem that people are just ignoring. The language experts, language teachers, it's not working. Yeah. Like, hello, it isn't. Mm-hmm. And all the conferences, all the money that's spent on those things, it's a waste. Mm-hmm. I mean, sure, it's a bandage thing to you know temporarily help and, and make it sound nice, but people are still losing the language and it's suffering. How do we make, what we want to do is help people to learn the language and become fluent speakers. That's it. So what I have been uh, doing is, um, sure, you have, um, what I've done is from grade 1 to 12, I have sequenced uh, all the units that uh, follow step-by-step expansion and sequencing uh, through the years to, to uh, grade 12. And... I also incorporated something that that has never been put in, done, worked on, uh, which is what I call the spirit or the core of the language, the functional language, which is there from day one, from the beginning and grade one, the language that is used all the time. Uh, just continues to be used year after year, lots of repetition and use and meaning. Mm-hmm. And it continues to expand through each grade level. It just continues to expand. So by the time they're in high school, they should be speakers of the language. Yeah. Because that core, the spirit of language, grows and strengthens their knowledge base and the spirit of the language. And and during that journey, they don't crash and burn. They continue to grow. And when they have that, they are 
sort of self-propel, uh, the, the, the spirit of the language has enough uh, flame and motivation and aspiration to continue growing mm -hmm. on their own. And the, the, uh, on the sidelines with uh, what is being taught to them and the speakers that help them and the language they hear on the side, it merely strengthens the core of their being. It becomes their personality, their identity, who they are. And that's because I sat back and thought about, I'm a speaker of the language. I learned how to speak. How did I learn it? So I pinpointed how I learned it. The people that were in my life growing up, ever since I was a kid crawling around, I don't remember that far, but I'm sure there were people there, and I know who they were. And during the years I grew up, all the people that were part of my life that spoke the language, those were my teachers. Those were the people that molded and shaped the language I speak. But it was part of me, who I am. Mm -hmm. So there was never any question about that. So that's how I grew and became part of language. I never thought about it. I never thought about, oh, I got to remember, I learned this word and remember it. Because when it comes to do the test, I have to pass. <laughs> so those are the kind of factors that in, yeah. throw you off, that yeah. block those things. Yeah. It's to be naturally part of that progression of language development. It's just look like learning to walk. First you crawl, you, you build strength, like skeletal, physical, muscular uh, development. Mm -hmm. And then you start to have coordination, balance, equilibrium, before you're able to stand and start walking. Mm -hmm. And that's the same with the language. You need all those support services to strengthen them, to continue to grow. Uh, uh, that does not, like, stop and go. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to walk and you don't practice or you just stop it, how will you learn to do that? And uh, so all of those things come into play with the, the language learning uh, portion. The functional language is the key part of a language program. And all the resources that I uh, provided, that I made through countless of hours of my time, I made those things with passion yeah. because I enjoyed doing that and it was no problem for me to develop this and when I make them I share it and I give it to anybody and everybody whoever wants it mm -hmm. and what I do too is I make it applicable for modifications mm -hmm. so that the people that use them or get ideas from them can modify it to their dialect yes and their community yes yes, yes. and to me the success of language programming, which I worked really hard to um, promote and teach at uh, programs here at the university, is to model how you do the, the, the language learning and teaching, mm -hmm. both ways, mm -hmm. and how you develop resources, yeah. where do they come from. Yeah. And it's always locally, it has to come from within the community or where the language is. Yeah. Because people want the easy way, they want to buy resources. You can't. Because mm -hmm. I've, I've been in many different schools and stuff, communities, and the resources that are being bought or brought to uh, the communities, they, sh they sit on shelves, they're not being utilized. Because they're inappropriate, mm -hmm. uh, and they're not uh, effective for the language uh, that is in the community. So the resources are very important, that they are um, appropriate. Mm -hmm. And 
only use resources that will be used because other stuff is just baggage that slows down yeah. or interrupts the, 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 the program yeah. and use the, the right people to assist you to assist the program mm -hmm. so the four states of our being it's important to know that our physical state is our shell it takes us place to place to be in places where we can grow mm -hmm. it's our choice mm -hmm. and with that comes our mental state the ability to think logic mm -hmm. like um, figure things out analyze things and how we think the third layer which is bit deeper is our emotions mm -hmm. our emotions come because we're human and that is what uh, makes us alive feel alive gives us the inspiration the motivation and the ability to learn and grow it's powerful mm -hmm. and deep down inside is our spirit the core of who we are the day we were born, that is the one thing that never changes. Mm -hmm. No matter how old you get to be. If, you, if you're 70 and you look back to the day you can remember back as young as you were, those values and those thoughts, ideas, and uh, what you thought was important and not important are still there. Mm -hmm. That is the, 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 the stem of the feather mm -hmm. is your core, your spirit. Mm -hmm. And all the strands on both sides of the feather are the life experiences you veer off to explore and learn. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, your core always pulls you back in mm -hmm. to identify uh, what it is you were given. Uh, to be part of in this lifetime to share and give and language is like that mm -hmm. it's not just learning to speak it mm -hmm. what is the purpose of it mm -hmm. that is a question we ask ourselves why, why, why do we need to speak it it's because it's the spirit of our being mm -hmm. when I speak my language uh, it's my ancestors that I hear they're part of me, mm -hmm. and they speak through me. Mm -hmm. Whether I like it or not, I don't have a choice. That's who I am, and that's part of my history. Yeah. Other people will try and tell me otherwise and condemn me for this and that, or say I'm not this, I'm not that. But who are they to know that and judge me for that? Mm -hmm. I feel sorry for them because I don't do that to them. I have no right to judge people or other people. Mm -hmm. I have no right to tell them how they should live their life. I do have a right to respect them, though. Mm -hmm. And that's another teaching, seventh teaching. You have to respect other people for who they are, mm -hmm. whether you like it or not, because you yourself, too, yeah. deserve that. You need that, yeah. that respect. So all of those things come into play. That is the, the, the language in its glory, so to speak. Uh, so when we talk like that, yeah. see, when I talk like uh, I, like I struggle talking with you. I think I'm pretty good in English. Like yes. I, I I communicate very well. Yeah. But I'm just holding back from like uh, when I start talking like this, uh, my language, native language, wants to take over. <laughs> it wants to pour out. <laughs> but I uh, I have to like put a lid on that and try and see. When I speak in my language, it's good to 
So the language itself is um, something that pours out from the spirit yeah. of your being. Whereas in English, I have to use the mental state, which is only on the second level right. of my being, right. to put into words what I'm trying to say. No, the 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 uh, the weakness of that is what I'm saying and painting a picture for you is a hit and miss. I might think I did very well explaining it to you, and <laughs> I'm assuming the yeah. picture I have of what I'm trying to say yeah. is what you're getting. Yeah. But I, it could be totally different yeah. because of your prior knowledge and experiences and, and background and stuff. Your yeah. path in life is quite different from mine. Yeah. So for me to think that we are like parallel with that, um, I can't think like that. I have to like share with you as best as I can yeah. what, uh, what I know. And that's the best I can do. Just like yeah. you know, what, 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 you know, when you talk, yeah. I, uh, there's, there, there's probably times where I can relate to a number of things you're talking about. Yeah. And there will, would be times where I'm like totally <laughs> out in the dark with that because yeah. I haven't been there or was yeah. not there. Yeah. And uh, so that's pretty normal. Yeah. But in native language, mm -hmm. it's not like that. Mm -hmm. In the days when there was just our language, we would go visit at a cabin, our neighbors, our people. Many times we'd just walk in the door and visit. Mm -hmm. And during the hour, 15 minutes, two hours, however long, there are many times not a word was said mm -hmm. verbally, mm -hmm. but it was a great visit. Mm -hmm. Because we could sense our presence. And I, uh, we can tell if somebody is feeling healthy and strong and happy or something's bothering them. Mm -hmm. And then you leave and tell somebody else, mm -hmm. I don't think that person's feeling well. You know, that's what I got. Even though not a word was said. Yeah. He's like, oh, he's doing really well. <laughs> like, you can feel the energy and stuff. And... and There's a, there's a communication that happens, uh, a spiritual communication. And words, when, when words need to be said, it comes out from there mm -hmm. to uh, uh, elaborate on the communication that uh, happens. When you start to uh, think about the success of language uh, teaching and uh, programming, it's that aspect of it that comes into play. Mm. When you teach or help somebody learn to speak a language, it's all of these things. It's sharing your stories and your knowledge and making the language have a purpose. What purpose? And the history of it and the power and the, the spirit of the language. It's that which latches on to the person. That's what makes it successful. And developing a curriculum to reflect that, I know what needs to be there and what works. And I'm working on it. Mm. But it's a lot of work. Um, uh, the language learner should be able to uh, speak fluent language. Yeah. Like anybody. Whether it's an adult, a child, or uh, a native person or non-native person. Anybody. That means I am including all the language that needs to be covered in every grade level. So the language is there. Yeah. The language teachers don't have to try and <laughs> figure out what type of uh, language they should be covering. Whether, you know, what words with terminology and what phrases and paragraphs and stories. Mm -hmm. uh, and I include all of that in there. Mm -hmm. And 
uh, having a sequence that just takes bands at each grade level and also preparing, uh, putting together resources that they can use on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and what I'd like to do to eventually is uh, provide audio and uh, um, video um, resources to go with that.